Greetings, YouTubers of the world. This is Arendelf playing Dota 2. And truth be told, I'm actually watching a replay of one of the games I recently just went into. But, uh... So, yeah, you can see me right there in the replay. Let's see if we can move this thing. Is that thing not movable? Well, that's grand. Alright, well, we're just going to go ahead and hit play, and we'll begin go running through this. Now, this replay is basically of, once again, me doing Ancient Apparition. And this was not as good a game as the last time I went in here. Yeah, it's actually going to be a little bit worse. So, let's see. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do uh, Player Perspective. And we're going to... I'm not exactly sure how we'll lock on to me, but... Uh, I guess we'll see when the game starts. <clears throat> and once again, we're dire. I don't know why it does that, but hey. All right. Now, I didn't do nearly as well in this game as I did the last one. Fact is, it was a typical support game. Like, what you expect out of support hero, that's what happened to me in this game. A lot of it happened to me because of this guy. He really had it in for me, and... Oh, wow, that's a interesting uh, glitch that just happened down here. Weird. All right, so gonna do it from my perspective, at least to start with. And I think I was the one who bought Everybody the courier. Nope, that's definitely not my courier. So nope, I did not buy the courier. Well, I remember, um, what's his bucket? The Shadow Fiend asked for a tango, but then he just walked away from me, and then he asked for it again, so then I gave it to him. Alright. 30 seconds to showtime. So, for some reason, everyone thought it was a good idea for me to solo bottom. Now, normally, you don't want a support, especially a squishy support, going so low bottom. I mean, it's generally counterproductive. But apparently, everybody thought that was a good idea, so that's what I ended up doing. It ended up being especially a bad idea because I ended up facing Slark, the game is on. who, let's be honest, kicked my freaking butt. I'll take I'll that. Take your Diablo, the not exactly sure how he pronounces that because not Diablo, so is it Diablo? I don't know. All right. Plus, uh, we got first blood. Definitely helped our team. But one of the reasons why this uh, game turns out the way it does is because both teams appear to actually be quite team oriented. In other words, they actually freaking cared about their team. Okay. Morning, mate. Do that. There we go. Start trying to regenerate my mana because I've already cast Cold Feet twice. And I want to try and get a ward down here. That way I can actually start to um, at least be able to see off into the forest. Now, one of the biggest reasons why this was a bad combination was because of uh, her being able to stun me and him being able to uh, do that. Yeah, I was beyond screwed. And he managed to get in that last shot that, even though he has a melee weapon, hit me from a distance and kills me. So, then I decided to buy another Clarity Potion and head back in. So, from the get-go, this game wasn't going well for me. I was having a lot of trouble getting last hits and denying last hits 
because for all intents and purposes, I had a lot of pressure on me. I wasn't concentrating as well as I usually do. It was just, for me, a rather bad game. Ah, I didn't even get that last hit, or that one. Nor this one. I missed last hit after last hit, just over and over. It got painfully frustrating. And besides, since I have this ward, I might as well do the team kind of thing. Instead of posting it in my jungle, I decided to post it over here. However, I didn't see pink coming down to collect the rune, so I ended up just taking it for myself. And then when I actually saw him coming down, I posted an apology. I sit here for a second, quickly writing out an apology to him. He ended up not responding, so either he didn't notice it or he was too angry at me to respond. Or at least he didn't rage at me. So... At that point, I grabbed Arcane Boots and made them my uh, next item. Oh, I barely dodged that one. And right here, I show Slark that I actually have teeth. I heard him right there. But the only reason why I lived through that situation is because Vengeful wasn't there. If Vengeful had been there, I would have been dead. And once again, I'm missing last hits like nobody's freaking business. <sighs> oh. Yeah, I gotta be extremely careful about going in there with her now there. Their combo is, rips me up. Oh, it's just painful watching me miss all these last hits. Hey, I got one! But not two. And two. There we go. Well, you can see the rune for bounty down there, illuminated by my ward. I apparently wasn't paying attention, or I was letting uh, Shadowfiend get it if he noticed it, which it looks like he hasn't. No, he hasn't noticed it yet. Yes, Penny, I know, I know. I could have been doing a lot better in this game. But I was in kind of a bad lane. Ah, Shadowfiend noticed it, so it was a good thing I didn't end up going and getting it. Because he had a bottle, so it was extra good for him. Yeah. For anyone who's new watching this, just so you know, when you have a bottle and you use the three charges in it and you grab a rune... And when eventually you either use the rune or when the rune times out and automatically uh, uses, you basically, uh... oh, Vengeful, ah, oh, you get the three charges back. Vengeful was sitting over there in the jungle just waiting, just waiting for me to come. That was her whole purpose. I don't know how long she waited, but she waited a while. And it sucks. You can see their teamwork here. It's very coordinated, very precise, just to kill me, make sure I don't level and get as much solo experience, and help them level. Because the more she feeds him, the more potent he ends up getting at the end of the game. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look around now. Okay. Shadow Fiend actually knows what he's doing. Vengeful was down there. I'm back in the lane trying to be more cautious. He's over. He's only got twelve hit points, and he's got a bottled hastrude. <sighs> Penny, stop making me yawn, girl. Ah. Well, 
Once again, I'm sucking on the deny and I'm sucking on the last hits. I end up putting cold feet on him once in a while just if I can get him to not deny me my last hits and whatnot. Not that that works out the way I hope. I end up hitting him with my um, chilling touch a few times. Hurts him a little bit, but not nearly as much as I generally might like. And wow, he just sits there regenerating. Uh, did he? No, he didn't ulti. What did he do to regenerate so fast? Huh. Oh, then I hit him with my ulti right here. Barely hits him, but it does hit him. And that stops any regeneration Radiant he has and does a little bit of damage. Now, at this point, I was depending on my ally who'd actually been pinging to go in. So, as I'm sitting there, depending on him, he then runs out. I don't realize he's run out. And these two combo me. And I'm like, oh, crap. And I end up pinging like, hey, you know, you were supposed to be here. And, boom, too late. So, these two then come in and are here in time to take advantage of my death but not to have actually done anything about it. Which was beyond frustrating to me, as you can imagine. It was extremely frustrating to go through that. All right, let's see what he's building. I think he's building an urn. What are you going for? I honestly don't know what you're going for. Let's see, and you... I guess a vanguard? I don't know. Dire looking fortified. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch back to player perspective. And hit up on me. And I think I'm ulting their fountain for some reason. I was probably looking to get a snipe in on somebody. But, ah, I was trying to snipe Vengeful, I remember now. But she regenerated. Not sure how she regenerated, but she did. Hmm. Sand King ended up dying. I think I'm trying to ulti you. Yeah, I'm trying to ulti here. Discourage Slark. A lot of times when you see me ulti, you'll see me running away from the target area as I'm ulting. It's because the further away I am from the area, the faster my ult, the second part of my ulti, which is that the actual damage will get there, and the wider area it will hit. So every time you ulti, if you're wondering why I actually run away, that's the reason. And then I quickly, oh, I thought this was when I juked him. Nah, it's actually when he juked Sand King. And I do get that last hit, good. Oh, I suddenly have the want to go to Lagoon. Why do I suddenly have the want to go to Lagoon? I sold my Tangos there because I didn't want to wait around in dangerous area with Slark right there. Uh, so I ended up just uh, selling the Tangos to get the last little bit of gold that I needed. Now Shadow Fiend's over there cloaked. We're going to go ahead and go to free camera here. So much for the Radiance Courier. Oh, he ended up killing their courier. Yeah, I remember that. Unfortunately, my ulti missed because Slark dove out of it. Otherwise, the enough damage, I might have actually killed him right there. He is regenerating. Oh, gained 30% bonus movement speed. And what did that say? Uh, dang it, where are you? New speed and ah, give it to me. And three percent health regeneration. Speed and three. Oh, and regenerate uh, three percent of your max hit points per second. So when Slark's out of combat, he regenerates an extremely accelerated rate, which is ridiculous. And my ulti misses again here. Yeah, as you can see, Nightmare was on Earth Spirits, but then it uh, hit on me. The reason why it did that is because I hit Earth Spirit to get it off of him, to 
try and uh, get him out of that dangerous situation. Especially since he was further behind enemy lines than I was. Problem with that was um, that nobody really realized I did that and then I was just sitting there behind enemy lines. However, they did come back to save me before I was killed. So that actually did end up being really nice. All right, I think I sent an ulti in here in short order. Yeah, there it is. Just to harass her. But, oh, then there is skeleton. Ouch. Oh, and then they just, that ended up going the other way. That sucked. I was lucky I wasn't there for that. Mid tower could use a little help. Them dire buildings are tough as nails for now. All right, I think I'm ulting here. Yeah, I'm ulting here. Difficulties. And I think it hits Skeleton King. Yeah, it hits him. As you can see, not a whole lot of damage at level one. Mostly, it's harassment. Because when you're freaking pegging people with your uh, ultimate ability like that, even though it's not doing a lot of damage, the consecutively hitting them over and over and over with it, it's kind of like the, uh, the Ginasachi hitting you with a spoon. It's enough to want to drive you nuts, and you just hate it. As you can see, I hit my chilling touch and put it on all of them. And then somebody plus me did our arcane boots at the same time. And then my ulti does hit Bane, which combined with whatever somebody else did there was enough to actually seriously hurt him. And then they come around for a quick flank. Oh, he misses slightly, but... Ooh, and the hook kills. And now Skeleton King's in a spot of trouble, but he's going to be able to come back. And I think I'm coming in to quickly give him cold feet. And Tower's pecking me. He stuns me while the Tower had been hitting me, probably in the hopes that the Tower would finish me off. But it didn't quite manage to do that. One of them bottom towers. All right, and then Invoker here is in a flanking position. I don't know if he's trying to run or. Yeah, he ran. The dire might want to mine the top tower. And then uh, Shadow Fiend decides to take advantage of what Invoker started. <laughs> And I think he comes gets bounty. You know the drill. Oh, how does this turn out? I don't think this turns out well. I think this actually turns out very badly. Oh no, run Pudge, run! No! I think he was hoping to get vengeful. Oh, that ended up being a massacre, not in our favor. Alright. I think I end up trying to snipe Vengeful and failing. Up. Yeah, yeah. My ulti, it, no, I'm sending the ulti in the wrong direction to even try and get her. I send it here. Must have been fortified. I guess I didn't notice that she was low health and heading back to the fountain. I could have gotten a free kill if I'd noticed. I can usually time those pretty well, but lately people have been regenerating outside of the fountain somehow. When I haven't noticed that they have had potions, otherwise I would have calculated for those and not tried to snipe them at the fountain. Oh, and then the one time they actually do go back to the fountain, I don't notice. Gotta love that. Alright. Oh, not directed camera. Player's perspective. Alright. I give Pudge chilling touch. Now, one thing I definitely have been trying to do is let them get the last hits, especially when they're the ones working on them. Like you see there, I did take one last hit for myself, but I was the only one who worked on that. Like right here, I could have easily have stolen that last hit from Pudge, or I don't think he actually got either one of those. But I could have just taken them, and then at least one of us would have gotten the gold. Radiant top towers in bad shape. Oh, then plus I'm buying wards, so this game, I am much more team oriented. And as you can see, I suffer for it. 
I just got punished this game. Oh, but my team was still very oriented. They were a good team. I mean, they never mean to leave you behind or anything like that. It just kind of turns out that way. I thought somebody else would pick up those wards and then would gather the be able to lay them, but nobody ever did. So, Dyer's mid towers having technical difficulties. All right. Harassment. The Dyer disowned. Enough mid -tower. to make you wanna go and uh, throw yourself in front of a bus as Jack, Kyle, Kyle, whatever. But unfortunately, the Gunasachi never did let Jack commit suicide, no matter how hard he tried. And I miss it. I hate missing last hits like that when I'm so close. I'm just gonna let Pudge come in and start taking the last hits. Sand King was in Nightmare, but it looks like that Bane put him in Nightmare just to make sure that uh, he couldn't hit him. It's where I actually start to lay the wards. Radiant's top tower is in bad shape. Oh, and now they're in full pursuit of us. Oh, and Slark. I poured everything I had in the Slark just to try and hurt him. Even though he's in his ulti, which normally would generate him at an accelerated rate. I mean, more than his normal acceleration. Um, my ultimate was preventing him from doing that. So it kept him out of the fights. And then Shadow Fiends. Uh, decommissions, Invoker, and then Skeleton King here. Man, he really lays on the pain. But, luckily Shadow Fiend had enough damage to bypass, to not get, he had enough damage and health not to get killed by the guy's crit and to be able to stop his life gain from saving him. Now, this is me balancing lanes out. I am ulting the top lane to one, get a tad bit of gold, and two, turn the tide back a little bit towards our favor. As you can see, it doesn't end up doing that a whole lot because um, this wave still got completely overrun, but it helps just a tad. Oh, and I missed an obvious last hit. And then Shadow Fiend shows up, so I just let him start taking last hits. Don't compete with your carries for last hits. Let your carries get the last hits. Now, mind you, if you're close to and you nearly got enough gold to get an item, say, hey, you know, I just need a little bit more. You know, and when you got a good team, they'll be like, all right, you know, go ahead and get some last hits in, and you can get the gold that you need. But that's only when you've got an awesome team. It's kind of rare to have teams that are that awesome. Most of the time, they'll just yell at you for daring and peeing impinge upon them getting their gold. <sighs> Fortunately, that's the community of Dota 2. Alright. Now, here you can see that my ulti barely hits anybody, and then Invoker beats the tar out of me. Unfortunately, I ran. I shouldn't have run, but I thought I'd be okay too. As you can see, something's following me. Boom! I just got pawned by Slark. Slark really has it in for me this game. And I ended up talking with the other players about it. And they said that mostly that was because I was the one person that he had a good chance of killing without being killed. Because Shadow Fiend, I believe, is the second squishiest character on our team. Maybe Sand King. But Radiant Shadow Fiend is our hard carry. Beast of a character when he gets built up. 
so Slark would be taking a huge risk by trying to engage him. Here I ping his illusions that he created and say, hey, you know, are you going to push with those? And as you can see, he actually starts to push with them on the map. I'm not sure where he's sending them, but the where is he sending them? Going to go ahead and go free camera. Oh, well, there is that. One last top tower for the radiant. So he sends the middle lane, which is actually really smart. Oh man, they wasted. They wasted abilities on them. One of the smart things to do when you have illusions is separate them. Send them into opposite lanes. Because when you just see one illusion, you don't generally think, oh, illusion. And another common tactic you'll see, I just pegged all three of them in one. So even though it didn't do a lot of damage, it hits all three of them, just bugs the crap out of them. When you send one illusion right after the other, you send one illusion in, you know, they don't know an illusion, they'll waste a bunch on it, they'll kill it and realize it was an illusion. Then you send the next one in, well, at that point, they're expecting that to be an illusion, unless they're really dumb. So then they just, you know, they auto-attack it, they kill it, done with. You know, I'd like to separate them, send them to different lanes. It takes a little bit more control and uh, a little bit more attention, but honestly, well worth it. And I really wish more people would do that, because it's a strategy I've had a lot of success with. Pushing a lane, getting somebody to commit a lot of resources because they think that's actually you. Even when you take like an auto attack and they notice, hey, he took a lot more damage than he should have taken there. They still over commit so much because you are controlling it and they think it's actually you. Whereas if you also wanted to take somebody off guard, you send in one illusion ahead of you they commit a bunch to it they kill it etc and then after they kill it um you actually go in so then they're expecting it to be just a double illusion you know that would be a good strategy oh i think we actually did really well here but i think slark ends up killing me yeah slark kills me here ah but I, do they manage to get him? No, I think he gets away. Oh, he cloaked the bugger. Oh. Slark would pick me out of the crowd every time. Alrighty. Well, now we're pushing another lane, but as usual, I am dead. Dyer's top tower. You know the drill. Radiant's mid tower's in trouble. Radiant's okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to uh, clear perspective. And I just ultied them again. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off. Uh, Well, it appears there isn't a way to turn off the fog. Hmm. Alright, for camera. Ah, I see. Huh. Oh, ulting again. And I think I was looking for a target and didn't find one. And ended up completely missing my ulti. Let's go ahead and look at this really quick. As you can see, I am paying a high price. 076. The only person doing worse than me in the game is Bane. And by this point, at least he has a kill and more assists. He just has one death more than me. Supports really get it rough. Tanks usually get it worse, though. But this game, I think our cl the closest one that we have to a tank is our uh, earth spirits and technically pudge but he ends up being uh got very effective damage 
But our Earth Spirit, as you can see, his score ain't so great either, but he's got a lot of assists. He's been there for most of the kills. Here, I was debating as to whether to be, try and help, but I was news that Slark would probably just kill me as well. But he ends up cloaking here and just being gone. Guess what's happening in the Dyer's bottom tower? I was buying some wards here, but I couldn't bring them to me because the courier just got used. We were just debating about what to do about Slark cloaking up and ganking us all the time. That's why I bought some sentry wards. But then one of them bought a uh, gem and some dust, I believe. And this is me, once again, sending another ulti up top to try and balance the lanes out. As you see, it's on its way, and it's just in time to uh, harass Slark a little bit. Trouble brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. Dyer's top tower is getting beat down. Can't do nothing about Dyer's structure. And then I don't know what Invoker was doing right there. Whether he was desperately trying to save that tower, for what reason I don't know. It's not like it was a critical tower. Or if he was just going in there because he somehow thought he could get a kill or take us all on. Just don't know. As you can see, I quickly drop a ward in there, away from the tower so it's not easily detected, to help give us some visual on the inside of their base. However, for the lane that we were pushing at the time, it was just a little too far over to give us as good a vision as I was looking for. Also, if you notice, I was a little too overcommitted right there, and my team, being awesome, went in to actually support me even though it put risk to them. They wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be killed without, uh, well, pointlessly killed. And as you can see, when Slark is in his uh, little hero mode, he's got that cloud on him, he can be killed. Rat nab rat? That's supposed to mean. All right, with Invoker being the only one alive and him teleporting in, he, like, announces his presence. Don't know what he thought he was doing there, but now he's teleporting in for a second dish of it. That tornado actually does do some damage. Now, uh, both Shadowfiend and I decided it was extremely important to focus on this barracks. As previously mentioned, this barracks does regenerate slightly, so if you do a bunch of damage to it but don't finish it off, it's next to no good. And then here, I think I try to focus on the uh, other barracks. Oh, no, here I get killed. I was going to go pick up that gem of true sight because they were pinging it like crazy. And then, uh, what's his bucket? Just teleports in and slaughters me. Oh, that was, that was irritating. To have put so much in and then got so casually killed. And here's Invoker just, you know, talking... Telling us to go ahead and the dire might want to uh, what do you call tower. it? Oh, push! And I, I think by that point he figured it was over and just wanted us to push and end. Oh, and I hit Vengeful there. Mm, all right. We are approximately a little over halfway through this replay. And there I'm getting some little, a few more wards. There's an enemy ward right there, whether we're detecting it or whether I'm just 
It's just showing up there for some reason. I don't know. There it is. Radiant's top tower is hurting. Radiant's top tower. Where was I? You see, you see how I'm kind of indecisive. I'll be going back and forth. I won't quite know what to do. In this match, I'm not nearly the overpowered self I was last time I showed off this character. It's because Slark keeps assassinating me. He keeps harassing the crap out of me. He keeps killing me. And I'm not nearly as likely to go off and at least be alone by myself nearly as much. I am much more inclined to be cautious here than I am to uh, do something possibly foolhardy. Oh, a lot of good it does me, though, as you can see. Oh, I saw that little uh, blip next to me to realize what was going on. However, one thing I do want to point out, the reason why I was over there instead of with them with Roshin was to try and give the team the sense that they at least accounted for one of us so they wouldn't think we were Roshin. It was kind of a distracting tactic. Unfortunately, it worked more effectively than I calculated for. There was Invoker off by himself getting killed by Shadow Fiend. There's him using his hook just to get a creep kill. Wait, did someone legitimately just use the courier to run over the Rosh pit? Oh, and there's What's His Bucket asking, when are you guys pushing again? Ooh, hit both of them. Now it's a level two, so it's doing a little bit more damage and lasts a little bit longer now. I just grabbed Bloodstone and put it down as the next item to buy in my uh, inventory. Radiance mid tower could use a hand. No breaking down the radiant structures like this. Radiance mid tower is coming apart. And then I send an ulti top lane. To quickly try and help balance out the lanes again. You know, without actually having to be in a lane, I can help push that lane. That is one of the best, if I do say so, uh, capabilities of Ancient Apparition. Here you see me laying the two wards. Uh, hopefully to help uh, not only with vision, but Slark in case he shows his face. And then you also see me drop the uh, invisibility detection in case Slark shows up this team fight. I want to be able to see him coming. And then I do a short little snipe on Vengeful. It was very beautiful. It made me feel very good about myself because that was my one kill in this game. And then there's Slark right there. He nabs me. I saw him coming, but I didn't react soon enough. Unfortunately, he also had a uh, gem. As you can see, I quickly checked his inventory and saw that. So he was able to kill my wards. Now, one thing about this Pudge, he is actually a really, uh, he's a very team oriented player, I noticed. I actually really enjoyed playing with him in this game. You won't see it just yet, but a lot of the time, he'll be throwing these last ditch hooks that will save players. Him and Earth, actually, whoa, what did he just do to Pudge? Oh, that was tight. Huh. Yeah, him and Earth Spirit had a lot of coordinated teamwork in this game, like hardcore. I was very impressed by the two of them. Wow, he is using that hook to great effect. I think maybe if he misses the hook, it has a longer cooldown. Hmm. Oh, he's saving up for his mystic staff. Oh, 
He even uses his ulti like that. Interesting. I'll go ahead and, uh, oh, there was another ulti from me. Gonna go ahead and go to uh, free camera. Oh yeah, I ultied him so he didn't regenerate at all. Oh, that felt good to watch him die. Oh man, he just, ugh. And now he's going to go ahead and come back. And here's uh, this guy in Nightmare. And I think I meant to get him out of it. But because we weren't in a deadly situation, I ended up not. Okay, I quickly drop a ward there. Okay. I keep hearing, you, you remember, did you just hear that noise, that little mm, 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 or whatever that was? I know that was a really poor imitation of it, but whatever. I'd like to know what that noise was. Oh, I think here I try to, oh no, Sand King got him out of it. See how team oriented they are? Sand King knew that Shadow Fiend was our better carry. So he did the support thing and actually got him out of it, putting himself into that nightmare. See, that's what a good teammate will do. When they know that uh, you'll make a bigger dent than them, they'll make the sacrifice. And even though that wasn't like a huge sacrifice, it was still enough one to show you this team, they, they really got the teamwork together. And as you can see, I've already put wards down to help with detection. Ouch. Sunstrike was actually well placed to hit me like that. Yeah, and I missed just about everybody. Oh well. At this point, I've got 2,000 gold, so I'm looking to spend it. And then Earth Spirit goes tossing me around. Punk. Earth Spirit apparently was just in a really good mood somehow, even though he died in that last fight. And when I say, I guess, you know, he's mad at us, he says, nah, I just feel like uh, having fun. So, yeah, as you heard Earth Spirit laugh right there, that was saying him LOL to me thinking that he was mad at us. And that was Sand King laughing back. I do not know why it's not showing my team's text. I really don't know why, but I would like to know. Oh, and he uh, he repicked up Gem so that he could go around and uh, de ward, I believe. And even though it doesn't really make that big of a difference, I end up grabbing the courier just to quickly get me that one item just a little bit faster. And then I disassemble my boots to get the point, I mean the soul booster, right then and there. Could have kept the arcane boots, but... And as you can see here, my ulti just misses, and that, that was just irritating. Oh, and through BKB, Bane ultis him. And though Earth Spirit does try to help save him, he fails and then he dies too. But he immediately buys back Shadow Fiend. And where am I? Well, at this point, I'm just worried about getting randomly hit by Slark since most of our team's dead. So I'm kind of just running around, even though Slark's in top lane. You'll see me being very nervous about going off by myself because of that Slark. I calculate where the two uh, waves will meet. I get a way to get a little bit wider radius. And I end up hitting only one of them. Still, it makes a minor difference and gets me a little bit of gold. I see that there's no wards, but I decide... Uh, oh, I didn't decide for sentry wards? I thought I did. Oh, no, there I go.
And I uh, think I'm planning on ulting up here again to help balance it out. However, our waves are starting to push over there. So I think I end up deciding against it. That it's not worth it. Yeah, I think I... Yeah, I have ulting middle lane. It's on its way. And then I hit both of them. Okay, I only hit one of them, and I only hit him through the path. Oh, because of this team fight. We're going to go ahead and go to uh, free camera here. Okay, did you see that? Now, mind you, Pudge's uh, ulti ended up messing San uh, Shadow Fiend up a little bit. However, it was still very awesome the fact that he reached in there and tried to get Shadow Fiend out of a potentially very bad situation. Shadow Fiend, unfortunately, goes down here. Pudge goes down here. I get chased out of here by Skeleton King. And then uh, I put Cold Feet onto uh, Skeleton King. And then I path him. And then Earth Spirit finishes him off. And then uh, you see Slark here. I drop the ward to quickly detect him. Wards him off. Yeah. So that saved at least my life. Brady Possibly uh, Earth Spirits if he might have hit him instead of me. But long story short, I sent Slark coming, so I dropped the ward. Radiance mid towers getting banged up. All right. Player perspective. Radiance mid tower. Now, I apparently missed several of uh, Pudge's saves, but Pudge actually had a lot of really good saves in this match Radiant's where he did successfully save shape. people from dying by hooking them. And he was extremely accurate with those. As you can see, I'm about to hit Vengeful, but it's not going to be enough to kill her because I don't have it on the third yet. The, the uh, third upgrade. The but I did just get my blood stuff. Which means my mana regeneration is going to spike to a semi-impressive rate. What have we here? Now, as you can see with my more... Uh, oh, you're only seeing my team's chat when they're all chatting. For some reason, it will only show Radiance chat. I don't know why... But only theirs, which is really, really stupid. Things ain't looking bright for Radiant's ancient uh. need to be in their shoes. Mm. All right, Arcane Rune is also something I'm told is rather new. It uh, apparently increases, it improves cooldowns and whatnot. So, and Earth Spirit went and kicked Pudge out of there for some reason. I really don't know why, but yeah. As you can see, I'm uh, sending Ice Vortexes outside, so that we'll have a tad bit of warning if they try to come in on us. But uh, here, um, man, Earth Spirit knocked Pudge up there. Pudge had to teleport to the tower. And then because Shadow Fiend didn't want to pick it up and Earth Spirit didn't want to pick it up, we had to wait for Pudge. So Earth Spirit apparently was just kicking Pudge around for the fun of it. So as teamwork oriented those two are, they apparently also goofed off a lot. Oh, yeah. See, there he is laughing about it. And this is me once again trying to also uh, balance out the lanes. Trying to help push them. And then I chilling touch everybody. Except for Sand King. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and see how this goes. Okay. I think we end up pushing in here. Alright. It kind of looks like we're half committed. Like we're wanting to, but not making an actual decision to. I actually think things go badly for us here, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, we killed Vengeful and then everything just went wrong. I think they came out after us and things went badly. And I... Mm, 
Okay, this is where things... See, I think I end up... Oh, Pudge nearly hooked uh, Earth Spirit out of there. There you go. Pudge hooked him this time. And fortunately, I got killed, and then Earth Spirit, you know, is kind of in there. But he successfully gets Earth Spirit out of there, but because Earth Spirit was already committed to a roll, it targeted a location. So he got hooked out of there, and then he got rolled back, and then Pudge hooks him again to try and get him out of there. But unfortunately, uh, Skeleton can teleport in, stunned him, and yeah. Now, this Pudge, really good at the hooks, really good at trying to save his friends. Just doesn't always work out so well. Now, since we've pushed through two lanes, uh, the more they're away from their base, the more our uh, heavy creep are coming in and punishing them. So, yeah, it's that much more pain for them. Now, I set my ulti down there with the intent to kill Invoker, but when I saw him turn back to his base as soon as he did, I knew he'd heal up to a point where my ulti wouldn't kill him. But it would delay him, as you'll see here. Does a little bit of damage, and then stops him healing. Which means he's going to have to wait around for it to end, so then he can then heal, so then he can leave without fear, etc. And apparently, Slar got caught in the path of my ulti. That's why he'll suffer a little bit of damage over time. And then I send another ulti down to help push the wave. That got me a good little tidbit of gold. Okay. If I am not mistaken, you'll see Vengeful come in here and save his life at her own cost. She saves Slark to getting herself killed. That, that was teamwork. Both teams. You see, yes, I said, wow, commend Venge. And... That was beautiful. She knew Slark was the carry. She knew he was the more valuable player. And she sacrificed herself to save him. That truly was dedication. She knew the consequences of her action would lead to her death. There was no not knowing that in that situation. An extremely impressive thing of her to do. Impressive thing of her to do. As you can see, the creep are helping put the pressure on them. It's hurting them. And uh, they're suffering for it. Because while they want to all be here defending, because the creep are pushing on their agent, what can they do? So Bane came here. He ultied Shadow Fiends. But uh, he then gets hit by Skeleton King. I mean, uh, Sand King. My bad. Sand King. And he wasn't able to keep his ulti up. And etc. Okay, he grabs this arcane here. I give him chilling touch to buff his attack. And I accidentally picked up an iron branch and I then dropped. Whoa, somebody got switched. There, every time I hear that noise, Rosh kind of just... Rosh's picture shows up, so... Oh, did you see that? He swiped. Uh one of our guys out of there. He just, his hook went in, grabbed him, pulled him out of the situation. He would have died in. Saved his life. Our Pudge is extremely team oriented. I actually, even though I don't do well this game, we end up doing well because of how team oriented our team is. They're all about teamwork. I love this team. He's dead before I get there. I think I got a little bit of gold from it, just from being in proximity, though. But not a charge on my bloodstone, I don't think. And then we kill their ward up there. Shadow Fiend kills it in one freaking hit because he's got does so much doggone damage. And as you can see, you only see text if it's all chat for some reason. 
when I'm on the Radiant side of things, <laughs> you'll see their chat, but never ours. Like my PP? What? Okay, got some interesting characters. All right. Now we're pushing mid lane again, or more like we're pushing um, top lane. Oh, I think I end up getting him out of it so that I can save him. And I'm putting a bad switch because of it, but he saves me! Oh, but, and he tries to shave Shadow, save Shadow Fiend, but is unable to do so. Alright, we'll go ahead and just watch this a little bit more. Okay, here. Yeah, this barely makes a difference. But I get a tad bit of gold from it. I end up finding this town portal here, and even though I have boots, I end up deciding to take it back to base. And then I decide to do a tad bit of farming since I can. But then I notice what's going on down here, and I'm like, oh, I better get the frag out of here or I'm gonna die. Because all they got to do is notice me, and a squishy little character like me is dead. And then I realize they're going to be pushing middle lane, so I go defensive. And as you'll see, my normal defensive tactic when defending the base at a specific lane point is this. You see, it's a little discouraging to them to know that they'll be accelerating through that. But, you see, Slark does. Slows them down ever so slightly, though, but Skeleton King blinked through it. But then he got abandoned. So, there was no way he was getting out of here alive. I gave everybody a chilling touch. So, they're doing that much more damage. You can see them trying to defend their lane down here. And then our guys teleport over here to take Vengeful out of commission. I don't think... Yeah, she doesn't make it out. Oh, and Slark hunted me down again. I was paying attention to another lane, so we'll go ahead and go to free camera for now. Or actually, we'll go to player's perspective and we'll switch over to Pudge. Oh. And you see, he ultis Slark here to try and uh, stop, prevent him from killing Shadow Fiends. However, Slark then ultis, and I think he gets away here. Oh, oh no, this is the end game. Wow. Yeah, I was actually teleporting in there. You saw that little teleportation. I was about to teleport in to help kill Slark, but the creep once again came in and ended everything. Now, at this point, I did mean to commend uh, my team because they were so good, and especially commending Vengeful for sacrificing yourself like that, but it glitched and it wouldn't let me. And unfortunately, it won't let me commend any of them, even at this point. So, yeah, it was lagging. It was said uh, stats down here at the bottom. It said stats can't be recorded that whole gig because of so-and-so problems. So I wasn't able to go in there and commend them, which was really irritating because I loved this team. They were extremely team-oriented. And as you can see, none of them, these were all strangers. None of these people were in a group. And that's how team-oriented they were. And I loved these guys. But I wasn't able to commend any of them. 
It was really frustrating not to be able to do that. But long story short, it was a great freaking game, and I ended up loving this game. Oh, despite how badly I myself did. I mean, let's go ahead and, for some reason, I can't get this thing to go away. Maybe if I uh, hit that button. Nope, nope, that won't even make it go away. Uh, that's irritating. Whatever. All right, we got it over there. So, uh, as you can see, 112.19. Pretty bad score. Like, seriously bad. And I didn't get through nearly as many items as I did in my last game. So, all around, I personally did a lot worse. When I don't get things my way, running this build on Ancient Apparition is really difficult. It's painful, and it hurts. But, once again, I was able to still contribute to the team, especially such a team-oriented team. I mean, these guys were awesome. And rarely, though, will you get teams like this. I'm just going to say that. Rarely will you get teams that are as good as this one was. Especially when they're not even actually in a group together. Alright everyone, well thank you very much for watching. I hope you very much enjoyed. If you have any feedback, I would love to hear from you in the comment section. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much again for watching. Don't get into too much trouble, or do. Always up to you. Toodles!